All right. Trig Lecture 426 through 429, that's four days. The student will simplify complex quotients. Uh, going back to Algebra 2, some, we talked about imaginary numbers. I want to make sure that you guys in Trig have the idea of dividing complex quotients, dividing complex numbers. So what I want to remind you of is that I is the imaginary unit, and it's the only number such that if we multiply it by itself, we can get a negative value. I squared is negative 1. I is the square root of negative 1, therefore I squared is negative 1. And what we're going to do is divide complex numbers by multiplying complex quotients. We're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. And that sounds terrifying, but it's really quite simple. Just remember, we can treat i just like a variable. We add them together, combine like terms, all that sort of stuff. But when we multiply them together, i squared is negative 1. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. Simplify complex quotients. We're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. Complex conjugates. The complex conjugate of a plus bi, where a and b are any real numbers. The complex conjugate is a minus bi. In other words, you just change the sign in here. All right? So let's take a look at finding complex conjugates. Find the complex conjugate. Sounds terrifying, but it's this simple. There is the complex conjugate. Find the complex conjugate of this one. Well, you just change this sign. I have found the complex conjugate. Yay! What is the complex conjugate of this one? We just change this sign and this sign only. Negative 3 plus 2i. There's my complex conjugate. Let's find the complex conjugate of this. Change this sign right here. Pretty simple stuff, finding complex conjugates. Now, when we find the complex conjugate of this, we want to think of it as 0 plus 9i. And then we change this sign and make it 0 minus 9i. And in simplest form, we just write that as negative 9i. So the complex conjugate of 9i is negative 9i because of this train of thought. And similarly, we can think of this as 0 minus 16i. And then find the complex conjugate, we'll change this sign, which would be 0 plus 16i which would just make that 16i. Okay. And that's how we find complex conjugates. We're going to simplify complex quotients, that's one complex over another complex, by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Simplify, remember that i squared is negative 1. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this quotient by the complex conjugate of the denominator. Here's my denominator. Remember, if we have just one term, the complex conjugate, we just change its sign. Just change its sign. So if I'm going to multiply the top and bottom, the numerator and the denominator, by the complex conjugate of the denominator, I'm just going to multiply top and bottom by 10i. What happens here is we wind up with 9 times 10i, that will give me 90i. And in the bottom we get negative 10 times 10, that's negative 100. i times i is i squared, and we've got to remember that i squared is negative 1. So i times i, negative 1. We multiply these, we wind up with 90i over positive 100, and then we reduce. Well, I can divide top and bottom by 10, so that would give me 9i over 10. Okay? And let me make sure that that's correct. Yay! Uh, a lot of people will write it like this, 9 over 10, and they'll stick the i out to the side. That's fine. Uh, our worksheet will have the answer listed like this. So. Our objective here, when we 
up here, simplify complex conjugates, multiply the numerator and denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. What we're trying to do is make sure that the denominator does not have an i in it. And so by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator, we wind up with a, new, a denominator that does not have an i in it. That's our objective. That's simplifying these quotients. So I'm going to do the same thing I did here, right here. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So here we go. The complex conjugate, I just changed this sign only. Whoops, this is going to be negative 6. And here we go. I'm going to distribute this up top. This will give me negative 36 minus 36i. In the bottom, I'm going to negative 6 times negative 6. I'm going to FOIL. I'm going to take this negative 6. Multiply it by both of those. That will give me positive 36, positive 36i. And then I'm going to take this one and do the same. Distribute it. And that will give me negative 36i minus 36i squared. And remember, i squared is negative 1. So this is going to be negative 36 times negative 1. So here we go. I'm going to simplify the bottom now. In the top, I'm going to wind up with negative 36 minus 36i. And in the bottom, I'm going to wind up with this fancy form of 0. These will cancel out. That will happen every single time because they're exact opposites. And I wind up with 36 minus 36 times negative 1. Well, that's positive 36. So 36 plus 36 is what? 72? And I can simplify this fraction by just, I, I see that they both have a common factor of 36. Everything up here will divide by 36, so I'm going to reduce the fraction by dividing the top and bottom by 36. And that will, just like reducing fractions when we were little. I just saw that they would reduce on reducing. This will give me negative 1 minus i in the top of the fraction, dividing each by 36, and that will be over 2. And there's our simplification. Some people would break that into two fractions, call it negative one half i minus one half i, and break two, two uh, and break it into two terms. But I think the book leaves it like this. So let's have a look. Negative one minus i, yay! So we multiply the top and bottom, the numerator and denominator, by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So we're going to do it again. It's the same thing over and over again. I say, hey, here's the complex conjugate of this one. I just changed the sign of this, just like we did when we were talking up above. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom, numerator and denominator, by 6i. Our objective is to make sure that the denominator doesn't have an i in it. And multiplying top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator will make the denominator such that it doesn't have the imaginary number in it rationalizing it. Well, here we go. I'm going to distribute this. This will give me 30i plus 6i squared. Now remember, i squared is negative 1. This is actually negative 6 now. Over negative 36i squared. Remember, i squared is negative 1. i squared is negative 1 have it up here. Otherwise, we can treat i just like a variable. we just got to remember that when we square it, it turns into negative 1. So this will be 30i plus, or rather, 30i minus 6, because that's 6 times negative 1, negative 6. 
and the bottom I wind up with negative 36 times negative 1. So that's positive 36. And I say, hey, all three of these will divide by 6. So I'm going to reduce the fraction, just like we did when we were little. I'm dividing top and bottom in my head. I'm just showing what I'm doing out here. By 6 to reduce my fraction. And that will give me 5i minus 1. I divided both of those by 6 in my head. And divide this by 6. And it will become 6. And we no longer have an imaginary number in the denominator. And let's see. Yay! I got it right. And last one. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Again, we're going to do the exact same thing. We've got a complex quotient. We're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. In other words, we're going to change the sign of this one and multiply the top and bottom by that. And remember that if we have i squared, it automatically turns into negative 1. That's the definition of the imaginary unit. So there's my conjugate of the denominator. Complex conjugate of the denominator is this. Multiplying the top and bottom of this, and when I get done, my denominator will not have an i in it, unless I make an arithmetic mistake. So here we go. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, I'm going to distribute that 8. That will give me negative 32 plus 24i. Now I'm going to distribute the 9i. Positive 9i gets distributed. That will give me negative 36i plus 27i squared. This is negative 1 times 27. So this is now a negative 27 in my head. I'm going to remember that. Whenever I see i squared, I'll get negative 1. All right, in the bottom, I'm going to get negative 4 times negative 4. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the FOIL method. I'm going to take this one and distribute it. This will give me positive 16 minus 12i. And now I'm going to take this one and distribute it. And that will give me positive 12i, negative 9i squared. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. i times i is i squared, and i squared is negative 1. So that's negative 9 times negative 1. Now I'm just going to simplify this mess. In the top of the fraction, I'm going to wind up with negative 32 minus 27. This is actually now negative 27 because it's negative 1 times 27. So I've got negative 32 minus 27. I'm going to use my calculator so I don't mess it up. They're the same sign. So I'm going to add them together and keep the sign, which will be neg uh, negative 59. That's adding these two. And I'm going to combine my imaginary terms just like they're variables, as if it were a variable. 36 minus 24 is 12, and it'll be negative because the greater absolute value is with the 36. So it'll be negative 12i, unless I've made a mistake. Hopefully I haven't. And in the bottom, look here, these cancel each other out again. My i's disappear. That will happen whenever we multiply the numerator and denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. It would be the, the difference of squares pattern. These will turn into a 0, leaving me with 16 plus 9. That's negative 9 times negative 1. So 9 plus 16 is 25. This fraction will not reduce because they, each term won't divide by the same number. There's no single number that will divide evenly into all three of these, so it won't reduce. And I'm finished. Hopefully I'm correct. You could break this into two fractions and call it negative 59 25 minus 12 25 i. But uh, I believe the answer key leaves it like that. Let me see. Negative 59 minus 12 i, all of that over 25. So this is, again, just a, a little walk down 
partial memory lane. This is stuff we didn't get a chance to cover in Algebra 2, so I wanted to introduce it real quick so that you can see and have a, a grasp of it if you ever run into it. You can do this. And next week we'll do what's called identities. Uh, we'll be jumping back into trig and uh, we're going to introduce the concept of identities and how you work with them. You can do this.